Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnamji and in today's video we will be discussing about an interesting topic that is the axillary artery. So as you all know, the axillary artery is a major artery which supplies the upper limb and it is located within the axillary. So we will be discussing on these further details. We will have an introduction, then we will see where it is located, then we will see like how it is divided into different parts. Then finally, we will discuss about the branches of axillary artery and the clinical anatomy. So this will be the order of the class. And let's begin with the introduction part of axillary artery. As you all know, it's one of the contents of axilla and it is the continuation of the subclavian artery. What is subclavian artery? The subclavian artery is a major artery which branches off from the aorta. And the subclavian artery will continue with the axilla as the axillary artery. And after that, the axillary artery will continue as the brachial artery which supplies the remaining parts of the upper limb. So this is the format. So it starts from the subclavian artery, then the axillary region it is called as the axillary artery, and then it continues down as the brachial artery. And this particular artery is covered or enclosed in an axillary sheath. The sheath will be covering this particular artery. So this can be included under the introduction part. Then we have the extent of artery. We have to define the location from word to word and extent, isn't it? So whenever you take down an artery, always remember we have to just explain the extent of the artery, from which point it begins and which point it ends. So it extends from the point that is the outer rim, outer rim of the first rib. So in this image, we can clearly see the mandibular part of the sternum. And the first rib is attached to that, isn't it? You can see that in the black color notation I have given. So, just next to the outer rim of the first rib, that is the starting point of the axillary artery. So, it extends from the point that is the outer rim of the first rib. Then, it extends downwards. And finally, it ends at the level of the lower border of the teres major muscle. So we have heard about the scapular muscles and obviously you will have studied the teres major, minor, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and all these muscles, right? So the teres major, starting from the scapula, from the lateral border of the scapula on the dorsal surface, that will be inserted to the medial aspect or the medial limb of the bicipital group or the intertubular surface. So at the lower border or the inferior border of the teres major is the end point is where the axillary artery, artery ends and then it continues as the bracket artery. So extend is from the outer rim of the first rib till the lower border of the teres major muscle. That is how you can easily remember the extent of the axillary artery. Then we have to see the parts of the axillary artery. So how many parts are there for the axillary artery and how it is divided? That's a question, right? So there lies a muscle in the pectoral region which is lying beneath the pectoralis major called as pectoralis minor. So it arises from the third, fourth and fifth ribs costal surface and then it will get inserted to the tip of the coracoid process. So over that, because this pectoralis minor will be closing the axillary artery in an angle and then it will get inserted to the coracoid process. So it will get inserted there, thus by the overlying pectoralis minor muscle will divide the axillary artery into three parts. Okay, so there is a part which is overlaid by this particular pectoralis minor muscle and there is a part proximal to it and there is a part distal. So these are the three parts of the axillary artery. So you have to remember the pectoralis minor muscle which closes or overlying the axillary artery divides it into three parts. The first part, second part and the third part. First part is proximal to the pectoralis minor muscle, then the second part is lying deep to the pectoralis minor, and third part is lying distal to the pectoralis minor. So in this diagram you can clearly see that. Here we can see the first part, then later we can see the representation of the muscle with the green lines, that is the pectoralis minor, the first one. So just deep to the pectoralis minor, the second part of the artery is lying. Then after that we can see the third part, which extends to the lower part of Teres major muscle. So these are the three parts of the axillary artery. 
Then we have the branches of axillary artery. So it's very easy to remember. There is a code with, with which we can remember the branches of axillary artery. So the first one is the numbers of branches arising from each part. So the first part gives of only one branch. The second part gives of two branches. And the third part gives of three branches. It's quite easy to remember, right? The first part gives of one branch and that is named as the superior thoracic artery. So here you can see from the first part there is an artery which supplies the superior aspect of the thoracic region and that is the superior thoracic artery. Then we have the second part and here you can see the second part only like I have just zoomed into the second part and clearly you can see from the second part there are two branches arising. There is a big branch which is the thoracoacromial trunk. Why it is called a trunk? Because the trunk will further divide into small branches. And this trunk particularly, thoracoacromial trunk will divide into four parts. And which are they? That's a question, right? So we will discuss that little later. And we will see the second branch arising from the second part. The second branch which is arising from the second part of axillary artery. That is nothing but the lateral thoracic artery. So here we can see the lateral thoracic artery. And that will be particularly supplying the lateral aspect of the thoracic ridge. So that is called as the lateral thoracic artery. Then comes the third part. From the third part, we have three branches, as I have told you earlier. Which are they? The first one is the subscapular artery. And it has got a peculiarity that is the biggest branch which is arising from the axillary artery. So the subscapular artery arising from the third part will be going through the subscapular region. And it will give off the branches there. Then the second branch rising from the third part of axillary artery is the anterior circumflex humeral artery. So from the name itself, you can make out the direction of this particular artery. Anterior circumflex humeral. That means it is like anterior and it circumflexes or it just rounds around the humerus. Which part of humerus? Which part of humerus will be coming in that region? The neck of the humerus. So the arterial branch, which is arising from the third part of axillary artery, which runs anteriorly to the humeral neck region, is called as the anterior circumflex humeral artery. And similarly, there is one more artery, which is in the opposite side of this particular anterior circumflex humeral, and that is termed as the posterior circumflex humeral. It will form a ring around the neck of the humerus and it is having some clinical importance. When a fracture occurs there at the neck of the humerus, there are chances that these arteries can get ruptured or it can get damaged. So that's the clinical importance that you have to remember. So there are three branches. I repeat, the first one is the subscapular artery from the third part. Then from the third part we have the second branch that is anterior circumflex humeral artery which will encircle the neck of the humerus. Then similarly we have the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So in the diagram you can clearly see that these are the branches. I have just taken out the second part and third part separately. And in this diagram you can clearly see how that anterior circumflex humeral and posterior circumflex humeral is encircling the neck of the humerus. So that defines the branches of axillary artery. There are total six branches. And from the first part, one branch. Second part, two branches from the third part, three branches. So, just a while before, I have told you about the thoracoacromial trunk, isn't it? The thoracoacromial trunk will again give off four branches. So, it's quite confusing, right? A lot of branches. But you can learn it in an easy way. So, before going to the thoracoacromial trunk branches, I'll give you a code to remember these six arteries, uh, six arterial branches arising from the axillary artery. So, you can remember it by one particular mnemonic sentence called as Slap the lawyer, save the patient. It's very easy. Slap the lawyer, save the patient. So, each first letter stands for the name of each branch. S for superior thoracic artery, then T for thoracoacromial trunk, L for lateral thoracic, then we have the S for subscapular artery. A for anterior circumflex humeral artery and B for the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So this is the code with which you can learn all the six major branches of axillary artery. Then let's see the 
the tobacco acromion artery or the tobacco acromion trunk. That will again divide into four branches as I told you. Here I have made a representation, a small part of the tobacco acromion trunk you can see and I have just drawn for demonstration purpose into four branches and I have marked them with letters of the first, first letters. They are A, P, C, D. Instead of A, B, C, D, you can remember it as A, P, C, D. And each letter belongs to the location into which it supplies. So the thoracochromial artery will supply the four areas and with four branches, with four names as follows. The A represents the acromial branch, which will be going to the acromial region. P for the pectoral branch, going to the pectoral region. And C for the clavicular region, which goes to the clavicular region. And finally, the D stands for the deltoid branch, which goes to the deltoid region. So these are the four branches of the thoracoacromial artery. So this concludes the number of all number of branches arising from the axillary artery. So I hope you understood the topic. And the last and foremost thing that is the clinical anatomy. So the axillary artery, even though it is placed in the axillary sheath. This particular artery is susceptible to something called as aneurysm. I hope you have heard the term before. Aneurysm is like a balloon like ballooning of the arteries, major arteries, causing a bulge and that can rupture later. So it is a condition in which the ballooning of the arteries happen. And when in case of axillary artery, when there is a ballooning happening on its wall, that is called as the axillary aneurysm. And if it ruptures, that can cause bleeding and that will internal bleeding. To prevent that from happening, there is a surgical procedure to excise that aneurysm and they will graft vascular tissue over them. So that is the clinical anatomy of the axillary artery. So hope you understood the topic well.